Okay, okay, okay. It's your boy Brandon Chung, man. And I'm back at it again. Oh my goodness, how many times have I said that today? I'm back at it again, man. So, 2022 World Cup cards and stickers. Will it be successful? Will it be a fad? I don't know. This is Brandon Chung's hypotheticals. Let's talk. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is a new series. I don't know, but it's just like it's like thinking about hypotheticals, right? Because we know there probably will be 2022 World Cup products if the soccer card market continues to be hot, right? I don't know. I, I honestly, I honestly think they have enough funding to make it now, because it doesn't cost much money to make stickers or cards. It's cardboard, right? But anyway, so let's talk about it. Will they actually be su like really successful? And if so, what is the level of success? So short term, what I mean by short term is like maybe a two months prior to the World Cup, like or whenever it depends. Whenever uh, Panini releases their products, uh, coming when you're talking about the World Cup, they'll are they'll already have a road to cutter World Cup products available. I think I think it will be definitely successful short term. Because even with the 2014 World Cup Prism at that time, it was somewhat successful. In 2018, it definitely was successful as well. Because back in 2018, the the sports card market was picking up. And there's and I've even seen in just generic like Forbes videos and stuff like that. People are just interested in buying World Cup stickers at the gas stations and that wherever they're coming from. So I was surprised how much retail was available I, from what I've seen those, in those videos. I'll try to link it in the description if I can find it. But I think there is some sort of a World Cup sticker craze. Especially when you're talking about World Cups. I think there's definitely a demand for that on the European side or the international side. Will there be the similar demand for card products? Because it really depends on the price, right? And, you know, let's talk about the price for a minute. And this is a very important thing. First of all, I don't know what the state of the overall economy be, will be in 2022. In the winter of 2022, I will say during the December time, that's when American consumerism is at its finest because that's closest to Christmas time. So maybe some Americans will be like, here's your World Cup Prism cards as a early Christmas present, right? And even that is reflected off Amazon sales. That December number sp spike through the roof. But that is only domestically. So, and I have a, this is a, this is a hypothetical side because I just have so many questions for you guys. And then I'm also thinking, how much American demand will be reflected on soccer cards and stickers in 2022? Because right now, there's a decent amount of American demand in the soccer card market. There's a decent amount of market capitalization. How much will, will there be in two years? More or less? And I don't know. My guess, my opinion is like soccer is going, going to slowly but surely grow in the United States of America. The sport itself. That's what I'm talking about. I, I see more minor leagues being created. I see more teams being added. I see celebrity and heavy investors continuously joining mls i see it being very high demand i don't know about two years but at some point i feel like soccer will overtake one of the major sports in america currently that's really what i think in, in the next six years when the 2026 20, world cup comes up but we're talking about 2022 so let's do that so price i think the prism cards will be expensive for everyday casual people. Casual people will not want to spend 50 or $100 or plus just for a pack of cards. But for stickers, they can buy like quite a few like stickers for a relatively cheap price. Maybe under, they can buy a few of those packs for under $10 or $20. And I feel that's more, a lot more affordable than $7,500, something like that. That's very important. I think there's going to be a, a lot, a huge casual market for World Cup. And that's what soccer card investors currently are hoping for. I mean, or at least they should be because, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to talk about if it's a good time to buy or sell. I'm just talking about the 2022 products itself. So long term, I'm not really sure. 
you know, because you'll have your 2022 World Cup Prism. You might even have Optic or Select or other brands as well, whatever Panini decides to do. And definitely those Panini World Cup stickers. That's That's been historically throughout time. Uh, even through major harsh economic times, there's been stickers readily available to buy. Excuse me. So yes, long term is a huge question. The reason why I say that because in 2020, there will be a 2014 and a 2018 World Cup Prism and a bunch of stickers from forever ago before the 2022. Because I feel like in 2022 World Cup Prism, that is going to be the most highly produced card, the, the most highly produced Prism soccer card set at that time in 2022. Because 2014 World Cup Prism definitely has lower supply than 2018 World Cup Prism. 2016 Euro Prism, not sure. 2019 English Premier League Prism, there's quite a, probably quite a bit of quantity. Because there's, the base set is like 300 cards. I feel like the base set for 2022 World Cup Prism will be at least 300 cards, if not 350 to 400. Just because, why, why not Panini make profit? I mean, they, de they definitely deserve to make profit. <laughs> the, this is the hot, hottest card market has ever been, so why not Panini? Just go for the money and do that. Um, that so that, uh, I don't know. So I, it definitely will be produced more of than 2014 Prism. Because in like 2023, maybe a year after the 2022 World Cup has been played. And yes, I'm throwing a lot of numbers, my apology. Like in 2023, 2024, people are probably going to go after the 2014 World Cup Prism. If the soccer card market is still relevant because that's the first year set. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. You know, the thing... I, I keep saying this and it's true. The sports business is an event business, very volatile business, reactionary market that's based off human behavior. And so 2022 World Cup, I think there's going to be a lot of like new players that suddenly rise. Like what if Giovanni Reina scores like a game winning goal? Then his card price for a 2022 World Cup card specifically is going to boom. And... And so I think events that will definitely be, there will definitely be short-term flipping opportunities within 2022 World Cup Prism, plus the fact that there will be more players that have their first Prism card or their first World Cup Prism card that never had it before. So it's very interesting to think about. And I feel like there's going to be a lot, you know, a lot of these new young players we're talking about are probably going to be in that World Cup. Maybe Phil Foden is one of them players, right? Um, I'm trying to think what if Canada gets in Alfonso Davies USA Christian Pulisic and Giovanni Reina get in the 2022 World Cup or and I'm struggling to think of players Jaden Sancho most definitely is one Jaden Sancho is a great example so all these players all the fans of those, these young players now in two years 2022 you're probably going to want to get those World Cup Prism cards but the stickers will have to have some sort of value as well for the casual market. But the World Cup Prism may be for the more, maybe for the true hobbyists and the true collectors and investors. That's kind of where I'm at with it. And I feel like there definitely will be more parallels and inserts. The 2014 World Cup Prism, it had like maybe seven different types of numbered cards, maybe... Maybe like seven more parallels. It had like some a uh, few like black, blue, red, white, and blue like plaid parallels, which look cool on the Luka Matric like Croatian card, like blue, like red and yellow. And I didn't have a ridiculous amount. I feel like 2022 will have like every color, like orange and green and purple and white, and they're gonna make up colors: turquoise prism or camo prism or. You know what I mean? There's going to be uh, just a bunch of like random. And that's why I think there's going to be too many options for not enough people entering the market. I don't know. I don't think it will be a fad. I just think it's going to be. I don't know if 2022 World Cup Prism for a long term investment purpose has as much value as 2018 or 2016 World Cup Prism. I just don't feel like that unless there is a ridiculous young draft class in there. Because, like, a Jaden Sancho World Cup Prism card will definitely have value. Like, you know what I mean? But most other players, probably not.
And it, it depends on the new teams as well who, or who are in it. Like, I, I can't even think of anything. What if there's a really nice... So you got to think about Netherlands and Italy did not make the 2018 World Cup prism. Or the 2018 World Cup. But it, chances are likely they'll make the 2022 World Cup. So they'll have World Cup prism cards. So you have to think about Donnarumma and... Whoever the young Netherlands players are, like Frankie de Jong might get a prism card. Matthias de Ligt. What if Justin Kluivert gets really good in two years? Um, Donny van Beek, right? Donny van de Beek, sorry. Um, and all these players. I don't know if Memphis Depay would be in the tournament. So you got to do your research. In 2018, who missed out on the tournament? In 2022, who can make it, right? So that's one way to think about it. The new teams and the regional demand. Because Italy is a whole country of people who are interested in getting stickers and cards. Netherlands is a whole country of people who are interested in getting in the stickers and cards. At least some of the people. Because soccer is very prevalent within their cultures, especially Italy. What will the state of the soccer card market be in 2022? Yes, again, I don't know. All I know is stickers were produced since 1970 every four years without fail. And there has been a 1987 stock market crash, a 2008 financial recession in America. I say this because the United States dollar accounts for a, over half of the entire world's currency. So when the USD fails, when the American economy temporarily, temporarily fails, this has rippling effects across all economies throughout the world. That's why I talk about American domestic markets so much because it matters to overall world economy. Especially back in the 1980s, it had a major effect on world economies. Now China is kind of getting to this level. But we're talking about World Cup prism cards. Like I said, you know what I mean? A, for a, a Pulisic, just imagine in your head a Pulisic 2022 World Cup prism card. Dude, I would want my hands on one of those. A Giovanni Reina or a Wesson McKinney. 2022 World Cup Prism card. I would want my hands on one of those just for fun because I am a huge American fan. Same thing for Alfonso Davies, you know, and all these players. So you got to think that's a casual fan, the feeling of a sentimental feeling. I'm just a fan of this. I want to collect it. So people will make that impulse, that one time purchase, right? And so I think there is a lot of short term flipping opportunity with those cards. Long term, I feel like, of course, obviously, there is opportunity. But I feel like, again, the 2014 and 2018 World Cup Prism, just because they probably have less supply and less parallels and less options, and they came before the 2022 World Cup Prism, I think it'll just be a lot greater. The 2026 World Cup Prism is an anomaly because that is going to be played in Canada, Mexico, and the United States, and the card markets are pretty nice in all three of those, especially in America. So that's kind of what... I've been thinking about another thing is a pandemic, right? Are there going to be fans in the stadium? Because, dude, if, there, if there's fans at the game, that's so much better than not having fans. Like, there's no other way around it. Hopefully, virtual reality will be able to do something back by 2022. We'll see. It's like, it's already been six months. We thought the pandemic would be over by now, but it's not. So, we got to ask ourselves, will there be a pandemic still around in 2022? That's a tough question. It's tough, man. The World Cup, man, it's tough to run that thing without a fans. Without any fans. So I hope there is fans. We'll see. It's just cool to think about hypotheticals, guys. I don't know. I love what I'm doing now, but it's just fun to think like like a 2022 World Cup Prism. 2026 World Cup Prism. Like, what if? Like, I don't know. That would be just so much fun just to think about that. And... And all these new uh, United States soccer players that emerge. Bro, it's just fun, bro. It's just fun. It's just really fun to think about things. And let me know what you guys think. Like, do you guys have any more hypotheticals to add? Like, are, are, I have a question for you guys. Are 2022 World Cup products, are they going to be successful? Or the sticker products? Do you think uh, there will be like a World Cup optic in the select and things like that? Let me know. Like, I don't know. It's just cool. It's just a cool little discussion to have. Um, man, World Cup. Oh, my gosh. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm excited about the Euros. I'm sorry to make it off topic, but I'm really excited about the Euros. And that's still one year away. 
<laughs> but I, but I can't wait. It, it'll just be so much fun just to watch, even no fans. Um, and the Premier League season is coming up pretty soon, so uh, I'm I'm gonna end it right there. Thank you so much, guys, for just subscribing and watching the videos and engaging in the comments and being and being awesome people. I appreciate you guys. I you know you can leave a like if you really want if you like a video like right. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just, it's just cool. Soccer cards is cool, man. I just love it. I, I, I know I say that so often, but it's true. Like, I'm just so thankful. I just love it. Um, I'm going to end it right there. I'm going to do some mail day videos after this. Be sure to check out some podcasts if you, like, want some more, like, free soccer card content. Um, uh, It's been your boy, Brandon Chung. Okay, okay, okay. Until next time.